apostate, apostle. It's kind of like a palindrome. Hey there, Bryce. Hopefully you can hear me okay on this one. I've been calling you HR all these months we've known each other, so if I slip and call you HR instead of Bryce, that's why. Looking at your two points, in your point of if God exists, then it is necessarily existing at its own cause. To me, God would be uncaused. So to call it a cause is sort of an oxymoron. It wouldn't be a cause at all. It's just if God exists, then God necessarily exists. I think we're in agreement on this point, and I'm not going to belabor it. However, when you say that if God exists, God will be the frame of reference for everything else, here I have to disagree with you. You see, I see the God idea as sensible in only the most abstract of ways. Even for someone who claims to have personal experience of God, they, if we analyze it, really have a personal experience of at best an aspect of God, and I think we could even call into question if there's experience at all. Not wanting to dive too far into that, I'll simply say that I'm with Kevin Smith in his film Dogma, that direct experience of God would kill you right dead. It's simply not something we can deal with. I don't see God as informative for our life experiences. I see, I see the human frame of reference as a composite of all of our life experiences. I can support this view of our frame of reference origin by pointing to the manifest difficulty encountered when trying to describe something to someone which is outside of their life experience. For instance, trying to describe color to a blind person. The words themselves fall short. There's simply no way for us to contextualize what is a vibrant color to someone who has never had sight. If God exists, then the reality of God is so far from the experience of humanity that we can manage only an imprecise approximation. So, I agree with you that if God exists, God necessarily exists. What I don't agree with you is that God can form any sort of frame of reference for the rest of our world experiences. At best, the idea of God in a very abstract fashion can be part of the complete frame of reference we deal with the world with. To your second point, uh, you say that if God is good, you will mean that in a different way than you say this glass of strawberry milk is good. Now, while I agree strawberry milk is good, when I say something is good, I'm being very subjective. I like whatever. I'm speaking purely of my own personal opinion. If I speak in a more abstract fashion, such as life is good, what I'm saying is that I believe on the whole, the experience of life is a positive. However, the number of suicides in any given year suggests that this is not a universal belief by any means. To define God is good is to demand an objective value of goodness. That's what Plato's form would be. To make an objective value meaningful, we have to have some capacity to experience it. Uh, so to make God is good meaningful and not just circularly redundant, we would need to demonstrate an objective value for goodness. Otherwise, we're just using the word to describe itself, and we're not saying anything. If I say, what is black, and you say, well, black is black, you haven't described black. And in this, it seems to me that you're using good in the way that I would use the word necessary. If God is good, and the cause of everything, then everything is good. Unfortunately, if everything is good, there's no possibility of bad, this renders the term good meaningless, which is essentially my criticism of saying God is good. You can say it, and it even sounds sensible, but there is no inherent meaning in the phrase. It just sounds like there is meaning. The anecdote I'm reminded of is a play in which a young doctor is asked why opium makes people sleep, and his response is that opium has a dormitive property. He appears to have answered the question, but all he's really done is rephrase it. Opium makes people sleep because opium makes people sleep. It's not an informative statement. Saying God is good because goodness is God is equally uninformative and meaningless. So, while you haven't swayed me, I've certainly enjoyed watching your argument, and if you have another one to this video, we can have a nice little forward and backward rebuttal series going on. I can't promise I'll get another one out every night, though. That's quite a challenge for me.